Have you ever felt as if you're overwhelmed by problems? <laughs> well, you feel like you're surrounded by negativity and frustration. And you have the knots in your stomach, and then you have the weight on your shoulders, like I'm feeling right now. Um, sometimes you might feel like you're trapped, or like you're facing a wall. It's a very physical experience. And, well, the problems that I attempt to conquer are just that, very physical. What do you think when you hear rock climber? Probably someone like this, a strong man who's muscular with shaggy hair. <laughs> and when people find out that I climb, they're surprised because I'm so small. And they think, you climb? To answer that is yes, I do climb. And I've been doing it for a little while now, about seven years, so more than half of my life. <laughs> well, this all began in the heart of New York City, Central Park. This guy named Yuki, he just told me all the basics of climbing. He told me that all you needed was a pair of climbing shoes and a chalk bag to have fun. He also told me that the pathway to go on top of the boulder is called a problem. And, well, there's also a grading system in climbing. So there's a V on the left side and a number on the right side. It's pretty simple. And if the number is lower, it's easier. So for an example, V0 is almost like a ladder, while a V16 is nearly impossible. One of my favorite parts about climbing is that no matter what your size, if you're small, big, if you're light or heavy, the problem is never going to change, but you can approach the problem differently. Well, back then, I was smaller than any of the other climbers around, so I had to master the skill of hand and foot placement. And I like to think of it as a puzzle, and I love solving puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> what began as a hobby soon allowed me to travel around the world well, do you know where this is? Any guesses? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, this is New York, actually. <laughs> I was pretty small back then. <laughs> and, well, but I've also traveled to places like Spain. But my most recent trip was to South Africa. And my goal there was to raise the level of female climbing by climbing the difficulty of grade V14. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, well, only one other woman had accomplished this grade, and only a handful of men. On the first day I tried this problem, Golden Shadow, I decided to break it into pieces. And by breaking it into sections, I would be able to test myself and see if this was possible for me. And even though I surprised myself by being able to climb all the sections, I was left with the impossible task of piecing it all together and doing it in one go. Well, during the next few days, I climbed from sun up till sundown, or even afterwards with a headlamp. Um, and I climbed till my hands were bloody and my eyes were full of tears. I was really desperate for this and stubborn. <laughs> I would fall and fall and fall, but always just hop up, hop back onto my feet and just figure and think to myself, was it my hands or my feet or should I just reposition my body? And well, eventually my dad suggested that I should find a new project because he thought that this one was just out of my reach. But I knew that I had to try at least one more time. So I said, why not? Just give it one more go. So I put my shoes back on and chalked up my hands. And it just happened. I don't know how. Um, I just got on the wall, and I seemed to just execute. I was able to realize my dream, and I was standing on top of the boulder. Well, and then I realized that 99% of climbing is falling and what you might consider failure. 
And that means that I just fall on my butt over and over and over again. And that success, that's only 1%. Yeah, it's so worth it. At the end, it's so worth it. I agree with what Bill Gates said. Success is a lousy teacher. This also ties into my, my daily life. Well, I've been having some trouble doing homework because um, <laughs> I have a pretty hectic schedule. So I wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning, go to school, and then I train at the climbing gym for about four hours, and then I'm back home about when it's about like 10.30. And then I start doing homework. And for me, homework is also my V14. <laughs> that's, how much, that's just how much I struggle with it. It's also really easy to get distracted when your phone is just a pocket away. And on pages on social, social media like Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, people only post things that are happy, like eating food, which is what I post a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just like traveling. And this is what people see, you know, just me having fun and me climbing. But in reality, this is sort of what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it so much. Well, <laughs> but um, from climbing, I've learned that like homework is sort of, in, sort of a part of the 99% to success. And what I've learned that um, nothing worth doing is going to be easy, but the effort that you put into it is going to pay off at the end. And I think that it's important to endure and climb through your problems. Be and well, failure is a huge part of success. And well, well, you don't have to be a rock climber to understand this. But I like to think that everyone in this room is a climber. Think about it. What's your V14? Because after all, we are all climbers at heart. Thank you. <laughs>